Good morning. February 12th. Here we go. Oh gosh, it's February 12th. Good morning, kids. How are you? Here we go. It is the Bika and we're live. Yes, we are. So I want to say hello to everybody. I'm back from Asia. It was a really awesome trip. Uh, you know my disclaimer. I put it on the YouTube. I'll put it here. I don't represent anybody except myself. I'm not a representation of a community. Just us. <laughs> Be yourself. So with that, today we're going to talk a lot about self-love and self-care because I learned how to do that from these long trips. Trust me. Good morning, Philip on YouTube. How are you? So I'm really happy to be back home, but I have to tell you, that trip was incredible. And we'll talk more about it real soon here, but it's really great to see all of you. I've missed you a lot, and I'm already on my second cup of coffee, and I took the whole weekend off. <laughs> Hi, Cass. Hi, Riley. How are you doing? Oh, Riley had his surgery. Yay for Riley. So Riley had his top surgery, and he's recovering well. Are you not, Riley? It's so good to see you. I'm happy that you got your surgery. That's so awesome. Good morning, Jennifer and Philippi, Philippi, Flippy, Flippy, and Jennifer and Charlie and Phoenix. Good morning, everybody. I'm Patrick. Mm. Boy, that trip wiped me out. I went across the world and back, and I don't know if you know, but I spoke in four different countries, one after the other. It was super intense. I care. Missed you too, my friend and Rhea. So. Honestly, it was one of the best trips I've had in a long time. I mean, I just feel so blessed at what I get to do around the world. It's just incredible. Oh, right on, Cass. It's just incredible what I... Oh, hi, Sherry. <laughs> it's really... It was so amazing there in Singapore. And like you, everyone took such good care of me. And I'm so grateful and so blessed for my life. It just keeps getting better. And all I can keep telling you... All I can keep telling you, if there's anything you get from me, is be authentic, be yourself, tell your own story, be positive, give back to the world, and the world will give back to you. It, I, if I don't prove it to you, I don't know what else to tell you. <laughs> because all the odds have always been against me. But they aren't against me anymore because I found myself and I found my place to be and I found my passion and I found my calling. And it's a real thing. So if there's anything you ever take from me, it is that. I am authentic. I am me. I don't have any apology for anything that I do or what I do or where I'm at. I give back a lot to the communities because that is the most amazing thing that you can do when you're on the road. I, I visited some amazing community centers. I visited one in uh, in Singapore that was unbelievable. Good morning, William and Jennifer and Mikel and Mandy, Mike, Michael and Lady Cat. Good morning. It, you, it was so incredible, people. Really, I... So in Singapore, I visited a community center called Project X. And Project X deals with specifically sex workers in Singapore. And it was such a beautiful space. We had tons of people there. And we had uh, I had my friend Nisha Ayub, who's from Malaysia. And she opened a transgender, a home for transgender, uh, homeless trans women mostly in uh, Kuala Lumpur. And she came and spoke with me. And uh, I just feel like I, I, I'm so blessed. And then in, in Kuala Lumpur, I spoke, I went to see the home for transgender, uh, homeless transgender women. That was pretty depressing and sad, but I have to tell you that, thank God for that home. So hi, Ria, nice to see you too. Uh, you, you had got to drive down the mountain for supplies. <laughs> Where do you live? <laughs> in the mountains? That's awesome. Way to go. So. This weekend, I got home on Friday night and I took a time off and I actually took gave myself some self-care, which is not an easy thing for me to do because I'm a little bit of a workaholic. So I did do that. And so I'm going to tell you, that's what I really want to talk about this morning. Realizing when, oh, did you see I got this scarf? Uh, one of the gifts that was given to me was this awesome scarf in the, and this is from Indonesia. Where, by the way, where, by the way, 12 transgender women in Indonesia and a very uh, up part of it, it's, it's Sharia law, and they actually captured 12 transgender women, shaved their heads, made them dress in men's clothes, and marched them down the street. 
It's real, kids. It's real. Being outside of the United States, and I'm not saying we don't have problems here for our own community. We have a lot of problems in our community here. But it's not we have to worry so much about the government coming after us and getting us and shaving our heads and making us march through the street to humiliate us. That we don't have to worry about here. And that is a big deal. Remember that. Even though you might not be able to get your surgery today or you might not be able to have hormones tomorrow, let me tell you something. There are people suffering in the rest of this world who can't even go outside. I went to a transgender homeless shelter in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia, and those women have to hide in there. I can't take pictures of the outside or any markings of the home because they're not allowed to be transgender or cross-dress or cross-dress. So you can't do any of it. It's completely, totally illegal. You actually get put in prison for cross-dressing. It is so scary. So I want to reiterate to you again and again, understand the gratitude, understand the blessings that you have living in the United States. Even though you might feel upset that you can't have surgery, it will come to you. You do have the opportunity here. At some point in your transition, you will have the opportunity. They have zero opportunity ever to get those things, ever. So I really want you, I'm telling you this, not because I, uh, not because I want you to feel sad or not because I think that you need to know what you have. You need to understand the things that are actually available to you here. Maybe not today, maybe not tomorrow, but at some point in your transition, if you live in the United States, you will get your surgery and you will get your hormones. It doesn't happen in Malaysia. It barely happens in Indonesia and possibly might happen in Singapore, but still not. It's still illegal in many, many countries. So this is why I'm able to go to these places and come back and tell you, have gratitude for living in a country where it's actually legal. It is legal here to be transgender. That is all you need to know. It is not legal in many other places in the world to live your truthful, authentic self. And why is it important for you to understand at the level that just because you don't get your surgery today doesn't mean you're never going to get your surgery. Doesn't mean you're never going to get it. It means that you have an opportunity. And opportunity is everything. Remember that opportunity. When you never have the opportunity, imagine. Just imagine today that you're never going to be ever because it's illegal. What if it was illegal for me to be dressing like this? I mean, that is just a, a, a scary fucking thought. Scary thought. Hi, Kaylin. Good morning to you. I'm having a wonderful day. I'm very happy to be back in the United States, even though I really missed Asia, miss Asia. It was a beautiful, amazing trip for me. So Cass says, breaks my heart. Yes, Cass. Miley says, this is why I appreciate every little finish that I do in my life. There are so many more people that have a thousand times worse. It's true. So today when you have that feeling that, oh, my life sucks or, oh, I don't get to have this or, oh, yes, you do. You get to have a lot of things. You get to live in a country where you're not illegal and you get to live in a country where you don't have to fear for your life every five seconds that you walk out of the door. It's a real thing. It really... It really hit home with me to realize the freedom that I have living in this country. I mean, I went to China. I went to Beijing. Let me tell you. <laughs> Let me tell you about China. Wow. Did you know that there's like 1.3 billion people in China? You could feel it. I mean, you could feel the intensity in there. It was totally wow. But that said, no internet. I couldn't hardly, I couldn't use Facebook. You cannot get on Facebook in China. I could not get on uh, I could get on Twitter, but I couldn't get on Instagram. You, it's a real thing. Hey, Stace, how are you? Nice to see you, and Tori. We're, we're talking about my trip to Asia and how amazing it was, but I needed to let people understand the gratitude and the, the gratitude you should have and the blessings you should know you have living in these free countries, the UK, United States, Canada. We have the freedom to be ourselves here. I was in countries where it's illegal to be a transgender person and it's illegal even to cross dress. So if I were to be wearing this in Indonesia, this would be considered as cross dressing, <laughs> I think. So good morning, Kai. Good morning from the Bay. It's a real thing and we shouldn't take what we have for granted. Many people in our community takes advantage 
and does not understand the gratitude they should have for every day. They get to at least walk the world as a trans person. You can call yourself trans. You can walk out the front door. In Malaysia, you will be arrested and put in prison for doing that. Arrested and put in prison. It's a real thing. Many countries are homophobic. Many countries are transphobic. So I did a... Uh, Le Le my trip was amazing, Leanne. It was just amazing. I have to tell you, Leanne. It was amazing. Seed Foundation dot... It's actually Seed Foundation dot com dot my, I think it is. Let's put that. If you guys want to donate to the Seed Foundation, which is the one that really helps put the... Made the home for transgender women. It's, um, it's Seed... Can you put the right URL for me? Thank you. I appreciate that. They're amazing. It's seedfoundation.com. Even, honestly, even if you just, even if you just donate five bucks, it goes far. It goes so far to the Seed Foundation. Naisha Ayub is an amazing, beautiful woman, trans woman in Malaysia. And I went to the home she built for transgender homeless women. And let me tell you, uh, we were all crying and we were hugging and we were laughing and it's a beautiful, amazing home. But she had the government doesn't give money. Nobody gives money. She only runs the transgender homeless shelter on donations only in a country where in Malaysia it is illegal to be transgender and it is illegal to cross dress. So daily they are hiding out. You can't get a job unless you cut your hair. You can't get a job unless you cut your hair and you dress like a boy as a transgender woman. And as a transgender man, you have to look like a lady or you can't get a job. It's real. And it's what I want you to understand. Please understand the gratitude and, and, and the amazing, understand the amazing blessings that you have living in free countries where you can dress the way you want and be the way you want. And you might not get your surgery today, but you have an opportunity to have your surgery at some point in your life. They don't ever get the opportunity. And I really cannot stress it. It's because I was there that I'm telling you this, that I'm telling you how, how really real it is and how real it made it, it made it so apparent to me, the, the gratitude and the blessings that I have and the abundance, that's my word today, abundance, that I have for my life. I have so much that if we don't talk about this, I think Really, within our community, we have to talk more about what we do have and what, and not what we don't have. Does that make sense? What do we have? Remember, don't go to the, what don't I have today? I don't have my surgery. I don't have my hormones. I don't have this. I don't have, no. What, what is it that you have in your life today? I have a beautiful cup of coffee and I have awesome people to talk to this morning. And I have an amazing, thank you for fixing that, Tori. I appreciate that. And thanks for putting those links up there. Seriously, they take PayPal. It's super easy, you guys. Five bucks, a dollar, a dollar. Like, I don't want to tell you what to do with your money or any of that. But I'm just telling you that if you want to be part of a community and community service, even giving a dollar to an to a organization that feeds, right now, I think they have 10 uh, homeless transgender women in the in the house. It's super clean. Two women to a room. They're super awesome people, but they have to eat and they have to drink water and they have to wear clothes. And these are the things that nobody gives them. They don't get that in Malaysia. Nobody's donating. We in America have to give back to our brothers and sisters in other countries who are suffering and can't eat and can't have a cup of coffee in the morning. It's a real thing. So you are suffering if you think you're suffering, and you're not suffering if you don't think you're suffering. Remember remember that? You don't have to suffer if you don't want to. You can figure out how to move forward in your life. It's easy to be in a place of victimization. It is so easy. We all do it. I think it's human nature, but it's also easy to take yourself out of that. That's why when I see, when I see this at such a level, it breaks my heart. Because I can't never complain about anything ever again. I can't complain. I have everything I want. Okay, today maybe I don't get to go buy that new bicycle that I really want to have. But it's okay. Instead, I'm going to donate the money to the organization because the bicycle will come some, some other time. Some other, my bike got stolen. But maybe someone else needed my bike and I didn't need it, right? So that's what I want to tell you. 
always take the negative and turn it into the positive. My bike got stolen outside of my house right here. Why did it get stolen? I don't know. Maybe because I didn't lock it up and I trusted the neighborhood. In that case, it got stolen. Somebody else needed my bike. I didn't need my bike. The universe gave it to somebody else. And that's a real thing. Instead of saying, fuck, my bike got stolen, which I did actually, I did do that. Then I realized, well, my bike got stolen. I can't fucking trip out on it. Somebody else needed it. I don't need it. I'll just get a new one. And it's that easy because I can do that. But guess what? There's people who can't do that. People who have nowhere to live. People can't even get jobs in Malaysia. If you are a transgender woman, you have to cut your hair and dress like a man in order to get a job. You can get arrested and put in prison. Naisha, the woman who runs the home, was arrested for three months in prison because she dressed like a woman. It's unbelievable. Good morning, Alex J. When I read that post, I cried so hard. Yes, it's horrible. Good morning, Carrie. You are such a uh, humbled, enlightened you. <laughs> I am very blessed, my friend, and thank you. I'm very blessed on so many levels. It's because I keep getting enlightened. I keep getting enlightened. The universe keeps putting it in front of my face. When I was across the world over there, I kept giving. People just gave me. They gave me enlightenment. They gave me understanding. They gave me a way to communicate back to you. It's the reason why I was over there. Not, not just to enjoy, but to bring back knowledge. I brought back knowledge for you to understand. You have a lot here in the United States, in Canada, in the UK. You have more than you could even imagine. So I understand the victim attitude that we get into as trans people. It's easy. It's easy to do that because today you want to wake up and you want to have the things that you've desired. You want to be able to have your surgery. All those things will come to you, but you have to make them come to you. As long as you're blocking yourself every day saying, I'm not going to get it. I don't have any money. Nobody's going to pay. You're not going to get it. You're not going to get it. You're not going to get it. If I cannot stress to you more and more how important it is to have positive thoughts in your head. So I'm at the transgender woman's homeless shelter in Malaysia. And what? They're all smiling. They're all happy. They're all so happy that I showed up and I came. They were so incredibly grateful. They don't have any food, but they were giving me their Kool-Aid that it's theirs, that I felt guilty to even drink because they barely have enough for themselves. And they were sharing their food and they were sharing their drinks with me, even though they don't have it. I mean, God, I was like, what? I'm like, no, don't give it to me. But, you know, it's like they were sharing with things they don't have. And what did I learn from that? Again, give and take. When you give, when you give, you will get back. But you must also take. It is very important. That is that word abundance that I love so much. It is such a, a beautiful, strong word. Think of it in your life every day. Think about the word abundance in your life every day. The aunt says, we are blessed to have woke up to another day and a chance to change the world. Tracy says, I think we take it for granted how lucky we are. We do. Tracy, we, we do because it's not in your face. When it's in your face, then you start to realize, and it's why I need to bring this information back to you. Not to say that you don't have gratitude for your life and not to say that you don't understand giving back. You probably do or you wouldn't be here. But that said, I have to keep reiterating and I have to keep saying to you, you don't understand. You have so much in your life. Even if you only have a cup of water, you still have things that other people don't have. It's a real thing. Lisa says, it's what you put out into the universe you get back in spades. Thank you for sharing. It. I live it every day. I live it every day. It doesn't mean you have to be giving, 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 giving. That's what I'm talking about. You also have to take back. So when I, I came back on Friday night, exhausted. <laughs> and what did I do? I put my phone over there. I shut it off. I got a whole bunch of junk food, pizza, I don't know, all kinds of crap, potato chips, everything. And I got myself in front of Netflix and I turned on The Crown because I haven't really watched it and I'm watching the first season. And all I did was eat, watch Netflix and sleep. I did go to the gym. But what I'm saying is that's self-care. I came back going, I got to get back to work. No, I took two days off. I mean, I still look fucking wrecked. 
but I took two days off and I feel so much more balanced and so much more able to be here with you and to be able to talk to you because there was no way I was going to be able to do that. And that's called self-care. So today, if you're feeling like, oh, I can't really deal with people, I can't really, I feel a little bit empty inside, I feel, take some time for yourself. It's okay. If you don't take time for yourself, you cannot give. It's a real thing. You just can't. Good morning, Alexis. Nice to see you. Amanda says, I woke up to a flat tire this morning, but I have a car and I have AAA <laughs> and shit could be worse. That's what I'm talking about, Amanda. So what? It's a flat tire. <laughs> so what? My car battery died the other day. I was like, fuck shit. And I was like, I have AAA. Who the fuck cares? Call AAA. They actually bring a battery to you. The luxuries of America. The luxuries of our life as Americans. The luxury that you can't even believe that we have until you go to a country where you are illegal. You as a trans person are illegal in Malaysia. You will be arrested and put in jail just for being a trans person. Not only that, just for cross-dressing. I have to put inside your brain. When you get a flat tire, it's just a flat tire. And some way, somehow that flat tire will be changed and you will keep moving forward in your life. That's all. You have to understand the universe puts bumps in our roads. You, there's no such thing as smooth sailing. It doesn't work. Things are going to get bumped. You're going to have little things happen here. You're gonna, your flight's going to get delayed. Somebody's going to have a heart attack on the plane, which they did. Somebody had a heart attack on my plane coming back home, and we had to turn around, go back to the terminal, and unload the, the plane. So I was on Air China, right? And I was the only white guy on Air China. <laughs> it was weird. I was actually the only white guy on my plane, and it felt so weird. Let me just tell you, I was in that space of being the only one. <laughs> and anyway, someone had a heart attack on the plane, and it was like, oh, shit. But I have to tell you, let me tell you this. I want to tell you this little story. So this guy had a heart attack, this older Chinese man. Oh my God, it was horrible. And it was right, actually right across the aisle from me. So everyone in the plane sat. Everyone sat in the plane. Nobody was, was stressing out. Everyone was chill. Oh, good morning, Sarah. Nice to see you. And Jennifer says, I agree. We are lucky to be able to live where we do. I live in Canada. And my daughter has been so lucky because she's had, yep, had her hormones and bottom surgery at 18. We truly are blessed. It's too bad that they are not quite in the times that we are. It's worse than quite bad. It's Sharia law, which is the Muslim law, which is the really hardcore law. So they actually kill you in certain places. Yes, they do. It's We are so blessed. You don't even know. Well, you do know, but you don't even know. So I want to just tell you, so the guy had a heart attack and I was like, oh shit. And everybody on the plane sat. They just sat and they waited politely as everyone came and got the man, took him off the plane. It took like an hour. We had to go back to the, we had to go back, sorry, sorry, Alex J. We had to go back to the terminal and let the man off. And as all this, everyone just sat quietly. Everyone minded their own business. I fell asleep for a little while. And then we took off an hour later. I have to tell you, wow, if that would have been on an American flight, people would have lost their shit. I've been on an American flight where someone has, has happened. People are like, God damn it. Now we're going to miss our flight. Blah, blah, blah. And I was like, the man just had a heart attack. But on the Air China, nobody said anything. Everybody was so polite. Everyone sat in their space. Nobody got anywhere. Nothing happened. Everyone was just letting them take care of the man with the heart attack. And I was like, where am I? How come people are so respectful of other people? How is this culture so amazing? And people aren't fucking mouthing off and freaking out on the flight attendants and acting like total jerks. How is that? It is so fascinating to watch different cultures and in action. And it is so fascinating to me to watch the difference between American spoiled people, American people, and I'm not saying everyone, but I have a lot of experience traveling. And let me just tell you, I, I was just shocked at the way the two different cultures act. The Chinese plane, everyone was so respectful of the man having a heart attack and let everyone, and the American plane, people lost their shit. We're late, we're late. just in their own shit. 
without giving any love to the man having a heart attack and letting them do their work. It, I don't even know what to say about that. <laughs> I don't even know what to say about that. It's really pathetic the way Americans act and the way Americans act so much like everything is about them and me, 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 me and no giving back and not giving shit about anybody else in the world. It's a real thing that's happening in this country. It really is. We have such a lack of empathy, Amanda. We have such a lack of understanding that it's not just about you. It's not just about you. Kara says because the Chinese are not individual. Yes, there's that too, but I have to tell you, though, it was respect. It was respect. As far as I saw, Kara, it was respect for letting them take care of the man who was having a heart attack, get him off the plane, everything in less than an hour. That would have taken took hours in America. Alexa says it's the same thing over here. An old lady fell over on the bus the other day, and me and this other guy were the only ones helping her. What? Where are you, Alexis? I mean, what is going on? Leon says there is hope for our world. We just need to become more enlightened. You know, I have to say a lot of the parts of the other worlds are really enlightened. They seem to work together. In Asia, it really just seemed to flow. You know, there's laws over there that are really fucked up. But really, as people, they seem to flow where Americans have totally lost respect for themselves, let alone other people in this country. It is night and day. And I just think that we really need to get back to understanding if we don't love each other and we don't respect each other's difference, we don't respect each other's individuality, we don't respect each other's needs, we don't respect each other's wants, we're not going to get anywhere in this country. We are so falling back. And, you know, I also want to tell you, as an American traveling the world, it's a quite fucking embarrassing. It's quite fucking embarrassing. People think all Americans are wingnuts. They think all Americans voted for Trump. Listen to me. They think that we all voted for Trump. They think that we're all crazy. They think that we're all fucking greedy. They think that we're all narcissistic. They think that we're all like Trump. It's real. So I was staying at uh, this beautiful, nice hotel in Jakarta, Indonesia, and oh, they put they treat me like a rock star. It's amazing, and I feel guilty being treated like a rock star. Trust me, it's it's just at a level of stuff that I'm just not used to, and I feel just kind of embarrassed sometimes. But anyway, that said, I was speaking to this beautiful woman who had been sort of like my host relations lady at the hotel, and I was waiting for my car, and we just started chatting, and I told her, you know, I just want to apologize to you about, about America, and she's like, what? And I go, I want to apologize to you about our president. That's not a representation of America. And she was like, uh, okay, wow, wow. She goes, and I opened the conversation. She's like, you know, we, we all can't believe that it's like that. And I'm like, I know, that's why I'm telling you. She goes, I go, we did not vote for him. Many of us did not vote for him. Only crazy people in the middle voted for him. And she was like, oh. and we started having the conversation. And I go, I need to tell you this as an American, we are very loving people. We love you. We have a lot of gratitude. We're good people. We, we, we are simple people. We really just want to create love and happiness like everybody else. She's like, well, we just see such a different thing over here. And I'm like, I know. It's why I'm telling you this. Because I don't want you to think that about Americans at all. But it's a real, see how I opened the conversation? And she started it like that. Marlon says, hi, Buck. Just wanted to touch base upon how you feel about designer children and parents altering the children after their births. Okay, hold on for a second here. I got to read this, kids. Marlon Ray Beasley Jr. says, Hi, Buck. I just wanted to touch base on upon how you feel about designer children and parents altering the children after birth before the individual can choose themselves or decide about their gender preference. I was altered after birth to be early male gendered, yet still I retain a single ovary. Oh, were you in, are you intersexed, Marlon? I don't. Okay, let me tell you this. I work with um, I worked with an organization called Children of uh, Intersex Children uh, in the United States. I do not believe children should be altered at birth. I am totally against that. I am totally against any doctor telling any parent, "Oh, your child is born with two genitals." Your child is born with a penis and a vagina or a penis and ovaries or, 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 or a vagina and testicles. So what? So the fuck what? What's wrong with that? And then telling the parents to alter the genitals? Are you fucking... I'm totally against it, Marlon. 
totally against it. It is not okay. There is no way you know what's going on with that child until that child gets old enough to understand themselves. How dare you, as a doctor, think you are God and saying that you can change and alter the genitals of anybody as if two or different genitals or if genitals that are a little bit different than the normal. What's normal? What's normal? There's no such thing as normal. It doesn't exist. We are not normal. None of us. There's no such thing. No such thing. So to answer your question, Marla, Marlon, I do not believe in it. I apologize for that happening to you. It is not okay. I wonder how you feel about it is what I would like to talk to you about. It. I am 100% completely, totally against it. Lisa says, here, it, instead of going with the flow, people get in the way. Yes, yes, it's so true. Good morning, Katie. Nice to see you. Hi, Bo. So, so I don't agree with intersex surgery, or we used to call hermaphrodites. My friend is a hermaphrodite. She calls herself a hermaphrodite, and she has both a penis and a vagina, and she lives between genders. Sometimes she dresses up like a lady and walks around and does that, and sometimes she wants to be her masculine self, and she becomes a man, and he's that. So he goes between he and she all the time, and that makes him her happy. And so that's her and him, he, her, <laughs> I'm going to call her her because mostly she lives in the, in the she, is happy with that. But they wanted to change her gender. So I am, tra Marlon, I am transgender. Okay, so, so how do you feel about your genitals being altered, though, as a, ch as a child? It says that you, I was altered after birth to be only male, yet I still retain a single ovary. Am I transgender? You're whatever you want to be, Marlon. If you're transgender, you're transgender. That's how I feel about it. A member, that's how I feel. You can be who you ever want to be. It doesn't matter. There's no rules and regulations. There's some kind of new rule that says that you have to have a penis to become a transgender man. What? Whose rule is that? Sarah says, got to get to work. So happy to see you. I'm happy to see you too, Sarah. Have a beautiful day. I'll talk to you tomorrow. Tori says, Marlon, if you identify the way you were assigned at first, no, you are not transgender based on... But, but Tori, of course, based on the definition, but whatever the definition is, it's become so fluid. The transgender definition is so fluid. It's why I'm not transgender. I'm transsexual. So for me, anything within the spectrum of transgender, you're transgender. I think transsexual is a little bit more put in a black and white picture. That's how I feel. That's just my definition. I don't know. Anyone can make a definition for anything as far as I'm concerned. Seems like it these days. We've let everything just kind of be however you want to be, which is fine. Jay says, I don't agree with it either, Buck. It's not right. And that goes back to the parents who do this to their child or even considered it mostly the people who teach their children when they grow up. Let me tell you something, Jay. It's not so much the parents. The parents are being frightened. The parents are being pushed into choosing what genitals. I'm going to tell you because my friends... I have many friends who are intersex slash hermaphrodite. And listen, they have been forced. The parents have been forced into choosing which genitals to, to accept. If the doctor goes like this, oh, little Timmy, how cute. But little Timmy has a penis and a vagina. Then he looks at the parents and he goes, you know, little Timmy is going to have a hard life having a penis and a vagina. We better change little Timmy to make sure that he can be a he or a she. He'll have a better life that way. So which way should we go? I think we should give little Timmy a vagina because it's easier. And then little Timmy can live as little Susie and nobody will ever know anything. Not true. You can't change gender like that. It is here. It is here. It's been proven. You can't do that. Kira says, I wish you filmed your trips and made documentaries. I know. I'm going to start doing that, actually. I, I, I think it's a really good idea. Someone else said that to me. I have pictures that I'll be posting. Tori says, Marlon, it seems that you were intersexed at birth with more male genitalia, but they don't do the surgery to remove the ovary. Exactly, Tori. So that's what I think, too. Like, like Marlon is intersex, but Marlon can be whatever they want to be. That's how I look at it. So Alex J., she is Canadian, no mocking. Uh... No disrespect, I'm Canadian as well. I'm joking. Okay. Rachel says, my next door neighbor as a kid has had genitals designated male. He looked 
like a little girl and was so sad being made to do boy things. He, uh, he should have been given the choice, not mutilated by the doctors who wanted to make a name. Yeah, and if you read, do you know the famous story? There's a famous story, look it up. I don't know the name of it. There's a great documentary. It's about a Canadian, uh, a Canadian twin. They're Canadian twins, young, young twins. Uh, Dr. Money, remember Dr. Money? Look it up, Google it. And he actually did an experiment on them. And they were a uh, boy and a girl. God, I don't know the whole story. I forgot. It's too much. I'll remember it and I'll post it. And then they, they made one of them into a little girl because the genitals were all twisted. But he should. He, he felt like a boy when he was growing up and he didn't know why. And eventually he ended up killing himself. It's a great documentary and it speaks volumes to why we shouldn't change genitals. It speaks volumes to it. He always knew that he felt like a boy. Always, but they made him into a girl, and he was raised as a girl. Doctor Money, look it up. It's it's, and there's a documentary about it. I don't, I don't know the name. I'll look for it. But okay, kids, I gotta go. Got a lot to do. Make up. Let's talk tomorrow. Uh, honestly, if you have some subject matters that you feel are pressing or that we really need to talk about, send me um, an email or send me some uh, DMs. Uh, it's difficult for me to check everything all the time, but I'll try. And we can. Um, yeah, it's a very famous story, Jay. It's it, they made a documentary too. It's very sad. So we'll um. So let me let YouTube go here. Hey YouTube, I'm gonna let you go real quick, and I'm gonna see you tomorrow. Thank you always for being on board with me here. I love you guys very much. Gratitude and abundance—they're real things. 